So now that we've gathered our evidence and we're looking at all the evidence and we've found a probability value or a p-value based on the test statistic, we're going to use that to actually make a conclusion or in the case of a court case, make a verdict. And just as a juror would, there's this point where you hear all the evidence and as a juror you're pushed to a point where there is beyond a reasonable doubt or in some cases there's not enough evidence to support what is actually being claimed. Well, in statistics, we call this the significance level, or the level of significance. And it's the threshold at which we say, beyond a reasonable doubt. So either there's too much, there's too much doubt or there's not enough. So when we do this, in statistics, the level of significance, also known as this value alpha here. All right? And so when we talk about alpha, that value alpha, uh, we're going to associate this with a confidence level. Remember your confidence levels. When you did confidence, let's say we were at 95%. When you're talking about 95% confidence, that means that inside of here is 95% of the data, right? So how much is on the outside? Well, we said on the outside that there is 2.5 to this side and 2.5 to this side for a total of 5%. Well, that 5% that, you, that we've said now, that alpha, that 5%, it's now going to correspond to our alpha level. So this and this make up the alpha level or the rejection region. And in terms of a two-tailed test, a two-tailed test is literally a confidence interval because you're testing both sides. When we do one-tailed test, we always set the alpha to one side. So common levels of alpha are going to be 10%, 5%, and 1%. And what that says is we've now created this threshold that if that probability value falls at or below this alpha level, we're going to say, hey, this cannot have happened by chance. And when we say something cannot have happened by chance, what we're doing is we're rejecting our decision. We're rejecting, and we always reject our, we always reject the no hypothesis. In the case of a court case, when you reject the no hypothesis, you're saying, hey, this bank robbery, all this evidence that we're putting together cannot have happened by chance. To have a 5'10 person in a yellow Corvette with a blue tux, baby blue tuxedo shirt on, cannot have happened by chance. And what that means is that this person is no longer innocent. Their innocence is no longer there. We're going to say they're guilty. When we do that, we reject HO, or we reject, remember in terms of a court case, HO is, HO is mu is equal to innocence. So when you reject HO, what you're doing is you're saying that the person is not innocent. And what that means we're going to make a conclusion, and that conclusion is that there is sufficient evidence to support HA, or sufficient evidence to support that person's guilt. Now, and we do this based off of that p-value that we got, and we're going to look at the alpha value level of significance. If the p-value is less than alpha, we're going to reject HO. Or if the p-value is so it can be less than alpha. But if the p-value is greater than alpha, that means the probability of all these things happening by chance is still just too high. We're going to fail to reject HO, which means we don't have enough evidence to push us beyond that reasonable doubt. So if the p-value is greater than alpha, we do a process we call fail to reject HO. Fail to reject HO means this. If I fail to reject your innocence, again, if I reject your innocence, that means you are guilty. If I fail to reject your innocence, that means you're still innocent. And we always fail to reject. We never accept. And the reason we don't accept is because think about it like this. Even in a court case, there are mistakes that are going to be made. And when you fail to reject and not accept, if you accept somebody's innocence, that means you're saying, hey, they're innocent. They didn't do it. If you fail to reject, what you're saying is there's not enough evidence to support that they did the crime. And there's plenty of times where a person has actually committed a crime and was found innocent. Or there's plenty of times when a person didn't commit the crime and were found guilty. So this, this language that we're using, this fail to reject language, it says that there's not enough evidence to support the claim of guilt. So we're not saying that they didn't do it. There's just not enough evidence to support it. And so here's how this works. Look at the examples we just did. And for the first one, where the school publicized the number of classes in the class of 25, we got a T value. We got a T of 
and we were testing HO mu equals 25 versus HA mu is greater than 25. T value was that and the P value for this was equal to 0 0.017. Now this alpha level that we're going to set is some arbitrary number. It's an arbitrary value that we set. And again, common values are 10%, 5%, and 1%. Well, we're going to set ours at 1% for this particular test. Test the hypothesis at the 1% significance level. So that means that alpha is equal to 0.01. So what we're going to do is compare the p-value to the t-value. So you're going to say 0.017. That is going to be greater than 0.01. So when it's greater than, when it's greater than 0.017 is greater than 0.01, if the p-value is, is greater than the alpha value, you have to fail to reject HO. You always reject or fail to reject HO first. So you fail to reject HO. Well, what does it mean if you fail to reject? Think about the court case. If we fail to reject somebody's innocence, that means they're still innocent. Why are we saying they're still innocent? Well, we're saying they're innocent still because there is insufficient, there's not enough evidence. So there's insufficient evidence to support HA. Because the whole goal of this is to try to show evidence in favor of HA. We don't have enough evidence to show that, to reject somebody's innocence. So what do we do at the fellow reject and say that they're still innocent? And it only happens when the p-value is greater than alpha. Now, well, what happens when the p-value is less than alpha? So look at the next one. We said that HO was that mu equals 18, and HA mu is less than 18. Well, here we got a t-value equal to negative 3.529, and a p-value equal to point. Oh, 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 five, nine, four. Well, this time our level of significance is at 5%. So we compare our alpha value here, which is our alpha value is 0 0.05. And we always compare the p-value first. So we take the p-value 0.005, 0 0.00594. That is going to be less than 0.05. So here our p-value is less than alpha. When the p-value is less than alpha, we reject HO. And we're rejecting HO because to get a probability value that small, it couldn't have happened by chance. So to get a probability of getting a 16, that chance only occurs 0 0.00594, that's not going to happen by chance. I mean, something significant is happening there. So when we reject HO, what that means is this. If you reject somebody's innocence, what are you saying? You're saying that they're guilty. When do you say they're guilty? When there's enough evidence to support that guilt. So you reject HO. There is sufficient or enough. There is efficient evidence. And you're always going to support or not support HA. So there is sufficient evidence to support HA. So to recap, we base all of our decisions off of an alpha value and a p-value now. If the p-value is less than alpha, if the p-value is less than alpha, we reject HO. If the p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject HO, which means that our evidence is not going to support HA.